Lambert's W function, branches W0 of x and W negative 1 of x. This video is about what is the Lambert's W function, why is it important, and how to apply it to solving problems. History of the Lambert's W function in 1758. Lambert solved the trinomial equation x equals q plus x to the power of m in 1779 and 1783. Euler transformed Lambert's equation into a more symmetrical form, x to the power of alpha minus x to the power of beta equals alpha minus beta times mu times x to the power of alpha plus beta. Euler then considered the case when alpha tends towards beta, the equation then becomes an x equals new x to the power of beta. Equations of this kind can be solved analytically with the Lambert W function. However, the utility of such a function was not realized until recently in the 1980s. The Lambert W function was introduced in the Maple software due to previously not being recognized as a function. The Lambert W function has not been studied systematically. In 1996, a paper by Paulus helped popularize the Lambert W function. The Lambert W function has now been applied to many fields. It can be used to solve equations in which the unknown appears both outside and inside an exponential function or a logarithm such as 3 to the power of x equals 8x plus 6, 8 lin x plus 2 equals x plus 2 or squared. For the first equation, x on the left hand side of the equation is inside an exponential function. x on the right hand side of the equation is outside an exponential function. For the second equation, x on the left hand side of the equation is inside a logarithm function. x on the right hand side of the equation is outside a logarithm function. All equations like these can be solved using the Lambert W function. Before we talk about the Lambert W function, we look at the function f of x equals e to the power of x. This is the graph of f of x equals e to the power of x. The domain is from minus infinity to infinity. The range is from zero to infinity. What about the inverse of f of x? It exists if and only if 
f of x is bijective, e to the power of x is bijective, so the inverse of f of x exists. What is the inverse of f of x? Geometrically, the graph of y equals the inverse of f of x and the graph of y equals f of x are reflections over the line y equals x. y equals lin of x is a reflection of y equals e to the power of x over the line y equals x. So the inverse of f of x equals lin of x. The domain is from zero to infinity. The range is from minus infinity to infinity. To find the inverse function algebraically, we write y in place of x and x in place of y. So we let x equal e to the power of y. Next, we take lin on both sides of the equation. After simplifying, we have lin of x equals y e to the power of x equals 2. We take lin on both sides of the equation. Lin of e to the power of x is equal to x lin e, lin e equals 1. So the left hand side of the equation is equal to x. The right hand side of the equation is approximately equal to 0 0.693. We just solved the equation algebraically. Now we'll solve this equation geometrically. Here we have the graph of y equals e to the power of x. We find a point P on this graph such that its y coordinates is equal to 2. We want to find the corresponding x coordinates, which we call x0. We can't find this immediately. We consider the graph of y equals lin of x. We find a point p dashed on this graph such that the x coordinate is 2. We want to find the corresponding y coordinate, which we call y0. We can see that y0 equals lin 2. So x0 equals y0 equals lin 2. So the solution is x equals lin 2. Next, we'll solve e to the power of x plus 1 or squared equals 6. We take lin on both sides of the equation. The left hand side of the equation can be written as x plus 1 all squared times lin e. Lin e equals 1. So the left hand side of the equation can be written as x plus 1 all squared. So x plus 1 equals plus minus root of lin 6. By rearranging the equation, we can now write x equals minus 1 plus minus root of lin 6. 
how about the equation x e to the power of x equals 2? Can it be solved analytically? Now we consider g of x equals x e to the power of x. This is the graph of y equals x e to the power of x. The domain is from minus infinity to infinity. Range is from minus 1 over e to infinity. G of x has a minimum value of minus 1 over e at x equals minus 1. Each y, the open interval, minus 1 over e, 0, is corresponding to 2x values. So g of x isn't bijective. So the single valued inverse function of g of x doesn't exist. Now we divide g of x into two parts. g1 of x is in green. The domain is from minus 1 inclusive to infinity. The range is from minus 1 over e to infinity. g2 of x equals x e to the power of x. g2 of x is in red. The domain is from minus infinity to minus 1. The range is from minus 1 over e to 0. g1 of x and g2 of x are bijective. Now that we've shown that g1 of x and g2 of x are bijective, what are the inverse functions? The inverse function of g1 of x is a reflection over the line y equals x, and it's the dashed green line. Similarly, the inverse function of g2 of x is a reflection over the line y equals x and is the red dashed line. The inverse function of g1 of x equals w0 of x. The domain is from minus 1 over e inclusive to infinity. The range is from minus 1 inclusive to infinity. The inverse function of g2 of x equals w negative 1 of x. The domain is from minus 1 over e to zero, the range is from minus infinity to minus one. W zero of x and W negative one of x are the two branches of the Lambert W function when dealing with real numbers. W zero of x is the principal branch. W negative 1 of x is the negative 1 branch. We let W represent W0 or W negative 1. Since W of x equals the inverse function of G of x, thus W of x e to the power of x equals 
the inverse function of g of x e to the power of x, which is equal to the inverse function of g of g of x, which is equal to x. So w of x e to the power of x equals x. Now we'll solve the equation x e to the power of x equals 2. We take the Lambert w function on both sides of the equation. The left-hand side of the equation equals x. So we have x equals w of 2 as 2 is greater than 0. So w of 2 equals w0 of 2, which is approximately 0 0.853. Thus, x is approximately equal to 0 0.853. We just solved the equation algebraically. Now we'll look at the problem geometrically as the equation is x e to the power of x equals 2. So we find a point P on y equals x e to the power of x such that the y coordinate is 2. We want to find the corresponding x coordinate, which we call x0. We can't find this immediately, so we look at its inverse function, y equals w0 of x. We find a point p prime on w0 of x such that its x coordinate is 2. We want to find the corresponding y coordinate which we call y0, y0 equals w0 of 2. So x0 equals y0 equals w0 2 is approximately equal to 0 0.853. Next, we'll solve the equation x e to the power of x equals minus 0 0.1. We take the Lambert W function on both sides of the equation. We know that W of x e to the power of x equals x. So we have x equals W of minus 0 0.1 as minus 0 0.1 is in the open interval, minus 1 over e, 0. So there are two solutions. Minus 1 over e is approximately equal to minus 0 0.368. x1 equals w0 of minus 0 0.1 which is approximately equal to minus 0 0.112. x2 equals w negative 1 of minus 0 0.1, which is approximately equal to minus 3.577.